talk markets. Joining us now, Scott Cronard, head of U.S. equity strategy at City Research. Scott, good morning. Um, wondering about your, your, your headline read on the market action so far this year. It seemed like we finished 2023. Pretty much everybody on the soft landing side of the boat. Things were going right. We're going to have a friendlier Fed uh, with peacetime rate cuts and the economy is still going to be good. Uh, we have a, you know, it's a pretty resilient market here, but mostly it's, again, the big growth leaders that have been doing the job for the indexes. So how are you approaching it? Well, so, so um, Mike, the way we've been approaching this is on the heels of the Q4 rally, we've been expecting a pullback into the first part of this year. We thought it would essentially unfold around the Q4 earnings period, which we're just now getting into. Um, e essentially, we still think that your lead indicator here is going to be 10-year nominals, and, and that's a focus. So with the backup in, in rates that you alluded to um, earlier, I think that would be part of the narrative for why you pull back. You're seeing that in equal weight S&P, but to your point, the NASDAQ and mega cap growth names have reasserted here. We remind that in that case, you know, while we do get focused on interest rates in the bigger macro picture, you still have fundamentals and the fundamental growth story for these companies looks like it's beginning a little bit of a tailwind here recently. That's that that's keeping that part of the market, um, you know, up and running. So in from a, from a bigger picture perspective, we're still of the view that the main theme this year is a broadening beyond that mega cap growth leadership. We think it unfolds as we move closer to uh, that, that, that Fed pivot point, which is you know, still somewhat of a discussion point. We still think it's uh, you know, early summertime frame. There's been some backsliding, obviously, in that broadening out trade. You mentioned that the equal weight S&P has, has you know, struggled a little bit, but it's only down 2.5% or something from its highs. I just wonder if, you've, if you feel like the market's going to have enough conviction about the path of the economy and earnings for the average company for that, uh, that kind of more comprehensive, inclusive rally to happen. Right. So if you think about the playbook, we really want to get detailed on it. So, you know, we're using a, 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 a higher estimate for the S&P next year, somewhere around 245, I should say, for, for 24. Now, within that, we've been saying that as we go through the Q4 reporting period, we ought to expect bottom up consensus to come down. And historically, it's not a surprise to see this time of the year, full year consensus come down by as much as 5%. Right now, bottom-up consensus is just below our 245 estimate. So again, if you marry the forces at work here, a bond yield backup on the heels of the strong Q4 rally, some softening um, in, in earnings expectations as managements continue to express caution regarding the macro outlook on the heels of the soft landing euphoria that kicked in, that all kind of gives us room for a pause. But again, we're very clear here, we want to be a buyer of, of any pullbacks particularly on the more economic sensitive side of the ledger. So there we want to continue to hold growth. We're overweight tech and have been for some time now, but we want to marry that with positions in more economic sensitive sectors. We've been overweight industrials for a while. We recently lifted financials to an overweight. So we're playing this barbell here between growth and, and cyclicals as a way to position, particularly on pullbacks. Scott, I don't know if you've been thinking about this, but um, this is a period of declining inflation. And you had revenue going up with inflation the last several years, and now maybe revenue is not, the top line is not growing quite as much. How should investors evaluate companies? Is, it, is this a time when we might see either A, declining margins because prices are not going up as much, or could you have sort of disappointments on the top line, but companies still doing well when it comes to earnings? Steve, it's a really good question, and we've been suggesting be careful what you wish for as you get this declining inflation scenario. Essentially, to your point, margins is an ongoing discussion point, but if you look at the 23 results, we actually saw and navigated a fair amount of margin decline. Um, right. But you can get offsets. You can get stronger top lines and so forth. So what we've been suggesting here is it's going to get more idiosyncratic in terms of this, uh, this, this decelerating inflation impact, we remind on a couple of factors. If you look at nominal GDP, it's more closely tied to sales growth. Right. Um, turns out real GDP has sort of a mixed connotation or connection to underlying S&P 500 earnings. So your point spot on, the way we're suggesting it's gonna get, it's gonna, there's gonna be volatility. In mm -hmm. fact, you typically see more volatility in the markets when the Fed is in an easing mode than when it's in a hiking mode. 
So we have to be prepared, we think, for a lot of the more what we're going to call idiosyncratic behavior as we navigate, you know, what has been, um, in, in, in our view, um, a fundamental headwind from the uh, stronger inflation reads of the past year.